Uh, we just got out of uh, Zion National Park and now we are heading towards Las Vegas. We are about uh, two and a half hours north of Las Vegas. So we will try to get through Las Vegas today, possibly find some RV resort somewhere, if it's possible at all, I'm not sure. Uh, I always take that gamble. But the Utah National Parks were just stunning. Uh, amazing scenery right through. Uh, the eyes are just going in every direction. Today is my birthday, 4th of July, and uh, we just went for a nice supper pizza place out here, just about eight miles west of St. George. So from here, we're just hitting the highway I-15s, uh, continue south towards uh, Las Vegas. I've been watching you from a distance as I turn out all the lights. All I want from you is to listen and remember the good times. If you think of all that we leave out, is that weird you're feeling good? I know nothing ever turned out as you wanted to. But every time I feel it, every time I breathe, every time I close my eyes, it's coming right at me all over again. Cause I just can't leave it be And I don't really care what they say It's all about you and me But every time I feel it Every time I breathe Every time I close my eyes It's coming right at me all over again We're at Bellagio Hotel Checking the inside first. After so many hours of driving from Zion. up at 8 o'clock in the morning and it's almost midnight after all this day of driving we made it to Las Vegas <laughs> first hotel we parked in is uh, Bellagio as I stated earlier because we went right inside and here it is and we are waiting for the Bellagio fountains to go on Mishka Natalusha, what time is it? I don't know, like 1 a.m. Like 7, seven in the morning? 
Exact. We made it to Treasure Island. <laughs> Senior frogs. Papa, why is there flat surface there? Okay, last bits of Las Vegas. One more, we're gonna go to Bellagio and we will wrap up this trip. And tomorrow, most likely, we will head out to Hoover Dam.
after two days of wandering in Las Vegas. Today, one of our last stops on this trip is Hoover Dam. So that's where we're heading right now, just leaving uh, Las Vegas toward Boulder City. I'll film a little bit on the way here. And then once we get on site, to Hoover Dam and we managed to get a flat tire how convenient <laughs> there's always something going on but so far the trip was okay but first we will explore this area and I'll try to get it fixed somewhere in Vegas the canyon walls, it's a volcanic conglomerate. You can call it lava rock, I will not be offended. Here the water inside the canyon walls is natural with sea fish. Green in the water is copper, red is iron, and white is calcium carbonate. It's okay, I get mixed reactions on that. <laughs> We have the proclamation, welcome to the Nevada side of the power plant. Now this is the point of tour where I can test your knowledge based on the information that I've given you. What direction is Lake Mead? Very good folks, you're on it. If you're pointing to my right, that's the direction of Lake Mead. The only thing standing between us and Lake Mead is the Hoover Dam and it's right behind that wall. Stand 726.4 feet tall. Spans across Black Canyon, 1,244 feet, measuring the top curve all the way down to the end of the bay. The length of the Nevada power plant is 650 feet. You add 10 feet to that, you've got the thickness at the bottom of the dam, and that is 199 feet below.
Good morning guys. Today we will be wrapping up our stay at KOA campground in Las Vegas. We had uh, three nights in this campground. It's uh, pretty clean, well maintained and it's close, pretty quite close to everything. So we have spent two days at the strip. Uh, we were there once at night and once uh, during the day. Yesterday we went to see the Hoover Dam. It turned out kind of a little bit of unfortunate day because I caught a flat tire. So the Hoover Dam was uh, quite interesting to see. Even though I did see it years and years ago, I wanted to show that to my family and my daughter. It is still early in the morning, about 7, 7.30 or so. My daughter still wants to hit the swimming pool before we head out on the road and we will be heading out to Salt Lake City. I'm not sure if there's gonna be any more interesting stops because uh, we went this way from Utah National Parks. So the scenery is gonna be pretty similar, just going the other direction. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm gonna film anymore or not unless something pops in that I missed on the way here because we did come in quite late, three days ago. Uh, and on top of it, right after we got here, my daughter couldn't resist and push us to go to the strip. So we started, we woke up like uh, six o'clock in the morning, started driving to Zion National Park. And from there, we headed out all the way to Las Vegas. Once we got here, it was way after 9.30 or around 10 o'clock. And my daughter quickly changed and we went to the strip to see the strip at night. And she couldn't wait to see the Bellagio fountains. <laughs> So yeah, so that was the long night. We got back to the KOA campground right after three o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure how she survived that. One thing to add, the temperatures out here are quite hot. Uh, every day it's like 38 to between 38, 35. And th uh, yesterday I think we hit uh, like uh, 42 degrees Celsius. So I'm using still Celsius, I'm from Canada, and those numbers uh, are more appealing to me. But yeah, it was bloody hot. If you are planning to stay at this campground or in Las Vegas, not in a hotel, I really recommend having air conditioner working on a, your recreational vehicle. Our AC is running pretty much 24 seven here, so, we are able to manage all that heat. Uh, even when we are sitting at the pool, I burn my shoulders a little bit, even though I don't burn that easily, but uh, that was the result of not putting any sun sunscreen. So now it's time to wrap everything up, pack it up and start heading back on the road. So if you need any type of food, the Walmart is right behind me, so you can stock up on food and cook your own meals. And there's other stores as well.
one of the last stops on this trip not planned but we have two days to spare before my daughter and wife catching the flight uh, we have arrived to Salt Lake City and we are camping on the Great Salt Lake and we were swimming in it just now I filmed some content a little bit with the drone it's a state park so it's uh, 35 bucks a night and tomorrow we will be staying at KOA in Salt Lake City near the airport that's like hundred and seven dollars a night uh, if I would know that uh, that's the case I would book both days in here rather than KOA because uh, there's pretty much full hookups as well but I just took the electricity and water for tonight so anyways that's gonna even out to the average price at the end of the day so right behind me as you see uh, there's uh, mountains and on the other side I'm surrounded by mountains as well and I'll turn around and right here we have the Great Salt Lake so when you swim in it it's floaty makes you really floaty you can lay on your back and chill and you will be floating without any movement it's 16% uh, more salty than ocean so yes it is salty and when it gets into your eyes it's really burning as well uh, the good thing is they have the little showers on both sides of the campground here and the visitor center so you can rinse off from all that salt because once you get out of the water your skin gets tight because that salt dries out very quickly on you. Natalie found a chunk of salt. Two. Or two chunks right on the shore. Anyways, so that's the beach area. It's got a quite unusual smell, but it's all natural. So just for information, that salt here is not really for meant for consumption. It's mostly used for road salt, to salt the roads in the winter, and also for water softeners, what we're using, for example, in Alberta, or I'm not sure, for maybe other cities as well, using the water softeners. So that's what this, the mining of that salt around this area is for. Uh, that's something that I just find out because I asked in the information center if that salt can be eaten. It can be, but it's not really worth it to get through the, through the purification process for consumption. And the funny smell also on uh, beaches here, it's because it's got distinctive smell, is from all the bacteria, because there's only some kind of a shrimp, like what kind of shrimp was that? Brine shrimp or something yeah. she said? Yeah. Uh, so that's the only three different species of that brine shrimps that live here no other fish and Also a lot of dead birds along the shore. They de decompose on a beach here and uh, Create that not too pleasant smell, but the water is safe to swim and It's clean actually even though it looks not the cleanest another species that live here is like one million gazillion of tiny flies that are pretty annoying once you get to that shore but uh, while you're here it's worth to hit that water and go for a dip take a plunge and enjoy the floating on the water without any movement right behind me if you go further down the road there's a Bonneville racetrack that we went last year and rode the motorcycles 